18 volt porter cable tools these ones as you can see in the picture um, that that are very heavy duty they work great they're old and they come with this nickel cadmium this bulky nickel cadmium batteries um, that are no longer performing well two about two years ago um, I bought a very cheap uh, impact driver from Walmart and it came with this uh, 20 volt 2 ampere hour lithium ion battery and it it works fine so I was like this lithium ion battery works great um, and I, uh, it would be nice if I could use this battery uh, with these tools so I don't have to buy another lithium ion battery that is uh, for this. Now inside of these nickel cadmium batteries yeah, you have the connectors that goes into the tool so I decided I would use the connectors from the batteries uh, because I won't need the batteries anymore so I will take out the connectors put it into the converter uh, and uh, use that to connect to this this battery instead so here is the design for this so as you can see over here I'm basically uh, measuring this notch of this 20 volt battery the notch you see over here and I am designing the extrusion that will go into that notch right so 4.5 uh, millimeter thickness that goes into that notch um, and the walls I'm keeping it mostly two millimeters to maintain some strength and uh, robustness of this uh, converter because it will obviously have to hold on to the heavy battery uh, while the tool is moving or vibrating um, and it needed some uh, robustness to it and since I'm printing uh, with PLA I might uh, change the final print to PETG uh, because uh, it will work better with vibrations in the long term but right now I'm printing with PLA and thick wall would help with the strength of the tool uh, the round circle over here is just a mouse ear uh, which helps with bed bed adhesion I use uh, extrusion of 0.6 millimeter to keep the print on the bed uh, which in my case it's a shiny surface of a glass bed um, and uh, it, it comes up, uh, it, it holds the print down and uh, doesn't allow the print to peel off uh, or you know peel up uh, while it's printing, uh, which is nice. So uh, let's look at the extrusions over here. So uh, as I go there, as you can see, uh, this is a tool, let's turn that off. Uh, so yeah, the, the notches, this particular notch over here helps the tool, uh, he helps the um, battery converter stay inside the tool. Uh, so this way I don't have to use a clip uh, and, and makes the design a little bit simpler. Uh, this notch, uh, the whole cutout over here uh, is for the battery to click in. So the battery has a lock mechanism that clicks into this hole. Uh, and you can use the existing clicking mechanism of the battery to uh, put it in and take it out, uh, which is very cool. And over here, you will see the extrusion. This particular extrusion is actually the one that will have the converter uh, from the battery uh, uh, that will connect with the uh, tool itself. And this particular extrusion, so you will see, I actually added that at the very end. So this was done uh, right at the end. Um, uh, extra extrusion that goes right to the bottom. And that is actually uh, what I call uh, manually designed support. So instead of using Cura Slicer uh, support uh, feature, I designed my own supports uh, just to keep it cleaner and uh, use less material. Uh, and also be more reliable in, in printing. Um, and notice over here in this cutout, that's the only other uh, the overhang that would be printing in free air. I am not adding any support over here because I have noticed that it, it knows that it needs to bridge this and it bridges that very well. Uh, I print this with 0.1 millimeter resolution. So the bridging works perfectly for that. Uh, because it's not bridging with too much material at that point. Uh, this carb and everything is very similar to the battery's uh, notch uh, and I did that with a little bit of a cutout from that extrusion um, and 
also notice that if you if you have seen polar cable batteries, you will see there was uh, there will be more features to this design, and I'm not adding all that. I'm keeping it very minimal. I'm keeping it uh, to extrude uh, parts and features that are only required uh, to the bare minimum required to hold into hold into the tool in a very robust manner without any uh, you know. Uh, wiggle room um, and and it works well it, it and, and for that reason it is also easier to print for the minimal design uh, there will be notches on the inside notice they're all uh, having heavy fillet uh, so everything is having heavy fillet so that nothing is having a huge overhang which would again require support so I'm avoiding supports with that uh, and this two notches over here are actually just uh, helping push the connector forward because otherwise it would be sliding in um, so the it keeps the connector in place the other thing interesting thing here is uh, so from the section analysis you will see i embedded a pipe so i kind of embedded a pipe in there this this whole thing is actually one pipe and then i fill the gap over here with a little bit of an extrusion uh, what's happening here is uh, we can um, Pass the wiring for the tool uh, through here. So the two connector that will go to the tool has to connect with the two connector that is going to the two battery supply lines. Uh, and uh, I'm using some thick wiring um, uh, to connect the two. Uh, and I noticed that if, uh, if the wiring is not thick enough, uh, it actually gets hot and starts melting the uh, plastic. Uh, if you are not using enough because you know some of the tools not all the tools but some of the tools draws quite a bit of power from the battery uh, and you would have to be careful uh, for we that we will not be using any support with this uh, cure supports with this print uh, as you can see uh, we added some manual support in the stl we uh, we will be printing this with 0.1 layer uh, 0.1 millimeter layer height so uh, this will handle this overhang quite fine uh, and this overhang over there uh, we will confirm quickly that it is indeed going to be bridged properly uh, these are all the settings that I'm using um, over here and let's slice and let's take a preview of the print layers to make sure that the bridging is happening properly so we will go right to that layer where the bridging is supposed to occur as you can see over here the nozzle movement confirms that bridging is happening perfectly mm -hmm. 